Pale Blue Eye is a murder mystery thriller that is now streaming on Netflix. I believe it came out last weekend and it was in limited theaters a few weeks before that. This is a film that is written and directed by Scott Cooper. And this is a film that stars Christian Bale, Gillian Anderson, Harry Melling. I, I always look at Harry Melling as Dudley from the Harry Potter movie. Got a pretty talented cast. The story here takes place in the 1830s and it follows a world weary detective named Augustus Landor. Augustus is played by Christian Bale and he is hired by the West Point Military Academy to investigate the murder of one of their cadets. And all of a sudden other people start ending up murdered. So Augustus enlists the help of one of their cadets to help him with this investigation. And that cadet happens to go by the name of Edgar Allan Poe, you know, the guy who would go on to become the world famous author, Edgar Allan Poe. I like a good murder mystery, but more than anything, I like a good murder mystery that has great atmosphere to it. More than anything else, The Pale Blue Eye does. It's not just about how it's put together, how it's directed, all of that. It's about the atmosphere that is created by Scott Cooper and his crew here. A lot of this is aided by some stunning and gorgeous, but also very muted and very moody cinematography. This is a film that deals with a lot of darker colors, a lot of blues, a lot of grays. Shot composition is feels very dour, very dreary. It's the perfect mood for a murder mystery like this. What also helps the mood is the musical score. The musical score was scored by Howard Shore. You guys know I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, so you already know how I feel about Howard Shore. I don't need to spend a bunch of time talking about how brilliant Howard Shore is, but all I will tell you is that he once again does great work here. It's a score that utilizes pianos and violins of equal measure, but it's mostly just a musical score that makes you feel pain and makes you feel terror every time you hear it. It's a well acted movie all around. Like even the supporting and side characters, they all do great work here. The highlight of the film is Christian Bale and not just Christian Bale, but Harry Melling as Edgar Allan Poe. My favorite thing about The Pale Blue Eye is undoubtedly the relationship between Augustus and Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, the way that they bounce off of each other, there's a mentorship and a kinship between them that you really like to see. There's also a little bit of a battle of wills going on between them in the sense that these characters feel like they're challenging each other intellectually actually whenever they talk they feel like they're trying to one up each other at times and that's really fun to watch. Harry Melling in particular, I know that I called him Dudley to start this review off but he is spectacular in this movie. Like it is a great great performance, probably the best performance I've ever seen from him. I can't call him Dudley anymore. I got to let the Harry Potter shit go. He was fantastic. Probably the best performance in the movie. And that's saying something when you have Christian Bale in it. As far as the mystery of the story, the story does take its time to plot out these details in a very methodical sort of way so it's a very slow burn movie and if that's not your cup of tea you're probably not gonna have a good time and I feel like most good murder mysteries need to have a good twist or two I thought the twists here are well executed even if they don't always land with the impact that the movie wants it to I would say this is a movie that feels like it's juggling two different mysteries at once and one of these mysteries unfortunately is just inherently more interesting than the other mystery by the time you get to the end of the movie one of the mysteries is revealed and there's a twist and you're kind of like oh okay that's fine, I guess. Then there's another mystery and there's another twist that's thrown in. This one more relates to a character personally and some emotional demons in his past. When you get to the personal stakes of the second mystery, that's the one you care about. But unfortunately, most of the movie spends time focusing on this other mystery, which is fine. But then when you get to the end of it, you're kind of like, oh, well, okay, that's that just wasn't all that compelling. There's also a lot of clunky exposition and over explaining to help you get to the point of these mysteries. And sometimes it gets a little bit convoluted in the details. They do a lot of over explaining and you still have some unanswered questions, questions that you're not really that interested in seeing answered. Very methodical, it's a very slow pace. I do feel like the beginning of the movie, the first act going into the second act really suffers from this. It feels like the story is being told in a bunch of stalled momentum. You inch forward, inch by inch, a little bit at a time. There's a lot of details crammed in and then they kind of stop things for a while. The stutter and stop part of the story definitely is where the pacing is gonna have the most issues. But I feel like if you can hang in there, there's a great atmosphere, a great gothic, dark, mysterious atmosphere that's created for this movie. I actually ended up enjoying The Pale Blue Eye more than I initially thought I would. I'm gonna leave this one in the Silver Age for Man of Steel. Tell me, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Give me your opinion on the film in the comment section down below. Please like and subscribe to The Super Fan Show, and if you like what you see, tell me how you feel. Stay tuned to hear more from The Man of Steel. Peace.